all right homesteader family welcome to this edition of the sunday monday vlog welcome back to the journey thank you for being a part of the journey and don't forget to share the journey i'm going to close this down because that camera is going to start trying to focus again and i noticed my face is dirty so i'm going to have to wipe myself down tonight actually kind of looks like a mustache but it's actually dirt because i've been outside working it's been horribly windy uh, we had several days of snow once again, two inches here, two inches there. Uh, got some bitter cold again, but the baby donkey's doing good. All the animals are doing good. I kind of screwed up my incubator. I started plugging part of a hole on the incubator to raise the, humi uh, raise the humidity up. And went to town, came home, and the air pressure inside the incubator push the cotton all the way into the hole, block the whole hole up, and the humidity went up over 80%. So I'm giving the eggs a couple more days to see if they hatch. If not, I'm going to have to toss out a bunch of eggs, uh, which is, I believe, seven dozen eggs that were supposed to hatch. Now that peep in you here, watch out, Rex. My kangaroo wants to play with the tripod. I made this little uh, brooder set up for the baby chicks you can see i've got all the different baby chicks running around a lot of them are sleeping over here so there's a lot more of them but we have a bunch of baby chicks and uh they just started getting some feathers so they're growing up really really quick cute little chick we got cute little rex over here checking the baby check out so all together I had let's see 25 35 45 I had 48 chicks hatch uh, before the incident with the cotton in the hole of the incubator so I had four dozen hatch out of the 11 dozen I was doing good I should have just left it alone but the humidity started going down. It was sitting around 66. I, I was told 70, 72. Uh, so I put some cotton in the hole to try to raise it up and had no idea that I was going to do that. So I got four dozen out of that. Uh, out of the 48 chicks, one of them drowned in the water, which is like that narrow. But somehow I got its head down in there and... Uh, couldn't lift his head out so I lost that one and then two of them they hatched and then they just died um, which I was told that happens all the time your hatches aren't always successful so from what I read online and all the research and talking to different people that do it I was very impressed that even though I screwed up that uh, out of 48 hatches I got 45 successful uh, baby chicks out of it and lost the three baby chicks so that was a high high success rate and if i wouldn't have done the cotton thing i think the others would have hatched as well so worst case i'll have to toss the eggs and i've got new eggs in there already i pulled the cotton out i'm not going to mess with the cotton anymore and we'll see with the next batch i also sold some of the baby chicks so i think i am down to i think somewhere around 28 chicks that i have left uh, which is fine with me because, like I said, I got the incubator so I can uh, refill the ranch with fresh chickens for eggs because I have people that want to buy eggs from me on a regular basis. And with the cold spells coming back and forth, I'm down to six eggs one day. Then I'll get the two dozen next day and four eggs the following day. So I need a lot more chickens so I can get a uh, good egg business going. Uh, so... I'll have these and then of course I can keep hatching and then once I have enough then I can start selling full size chickens which people buy on Craigslist all the time. Uh, baby ducks, baby uh, geese, emus, peacocks, so on and so forth and go from there. So I got all that taken care of. I found my six emu eggs so the emu eggs are in there. I'm not sure if I ruined the four uh, that were in there or five of them that were in there when the humidity went up so only time will tell on those but it's my first time that's what happens 
I'm doing a bunch of work around the ranch trying to get everything cleaned up. I got a couple friends that are going to come up uh, this week since I opened Friday and try to get a bunch of stuff uh, cleaned up. Everything moved over to the other side of the ranch so it's out of the way and make everything look nicer. I got the mulch spread. I redid the whole chicken area inside the shipping container. The only other thing I might do is I might buy some white lattice and put lattice in between each rack. Uh, but I'm not sure if I'm going to do that yet or not because lattice is like 30 or 40 bucks for a 4x8 section. And I would need four sections of lattice if not a fifth section. Uh, so that's another hundred some dollars and I've already got a lot of money uh, sunk into renovations and what I'm doing around here on the ranch. I ordered a bunch of juicy fruit gum. So I have I think several thousand sticks of juicy fruit coming in. I've been doing research on something because I'm getting a lot of prairie dogs now uh, since I have a lot more feed on the ranch. So I found out rodents, mice, rats, um, gophers, prairie dogs, all that type of stuff. They eat the juicy fruit. It binds them up and it kills them. And it's a natural killer. Uh, so that way I don't want to put poison blocks out where the animals, you know, an emu finds a dead mice and eats it. Uh, the gum's not going to kill an emu or kill the chickens or anything like that. Uh, so I've been doing a lot of research on that. I found... For $50, I think it was, with free shipping, I bought all this juicy fruit. And apparently, it dates back a lot of years. Uh, bubble gum, not the fake sugars. It's juicy fruits like the only gum nowadays that still has real sugars and uh, everything that will act as a binding agent. So I'm going to try that out. It says put a half a stick down, go for holes, which since I bought so much gum, I'll put a whole stick uh Last night, I was out working, and I came out with Spotlight, and there were mice running all over the place. So, I'm also going to just toss pieces of gum here and there, put it, put some underneath this camper trailer, uh, put some underneath the porta potty So, that way, mice can go ahead and eat it. Hopefully, that will start clearing out all the rodents, because they carry diseases and everything else. And, uh, we don't want any diseases for Rex or anybody else to catch. So, that's what we're going to do. I also got a uh, big, I think it's a 6 foot by 3 foot bulletin board or 8 foot by 3 foot. I forget what size I bought. Uh, they're normally like $1,000. I found one on eBay. Uh, brand new, still in the package for I think $680. So, I'm going to be installing that uh, to put... Um, events, uh, different prices, things that I have for sale and all that type of stuff at the entrance of the petting zoo. And I paid my insurance. The insurance goes into effect May 1st. We open May 1st, which is Friday. Uh, so we have a lot of stuff to get done. I got the plastic Rubbermaid shed. I, with my military discount at Home Depot, it came out to like 280 bucks. I highly do not recommend buying one of those Rubbermaid uh, sheds. They are so flimsy and horrible. But I needed something that was cheap that I could throw up real quick so I could get a temporary well house going. Like I said, I already had the well permit. That's how I got the well put in and the permits for a domestic well. So I can use it to water up to three households, water all my animals, and water and irrigate up to an acre of farmland or orchards. I can wash my cars, all that type of stuff as well. So like you see, I have where I want to pour a concrete pad, but I don't want to do anything permanent until I get my house built. Because then once my house is built, then I'll have the inspectors come in run all the plumbing, run all the electric, get everything inspected, get everything signed off, pour the concrete pad, build the well house, and be in business. And that way I'll have electric to the well house as well for this upcoming winter where I can throw a heater in there. I never have to worry about the well pump freezing or any of my plumbing freezing. And I can just run everything outside 
so it's not in the house i don't have to worry about a big mechanic room or listening to a loud pump going off or uh, different things making a bunch of noises in the house i can make my house really quiet minus all the animals of course that i'll have in the house because i plan to get parrots macaws all that type of stuff as well as baby birds making noises and things like that so that's pretty much it for this week uh just got to go to town get more uh, materials i gotta pick up another couple pallets of feed since i'm opening friday i want to make sure i'm stocked on feed that i don't have to run to town and then what i'll do is on my days off i'll make sure i schedule things uh in accordance so that way i can get to town with plenty of time before um i would need to get in anything so that way i can be here for the five days a week the five days that i'm here running the petting zoo i don't have to worry about going to town so with that i hope everybody has a great week thank you for being a part of the journey thank you for those that are sharing the journey and commenting and thumbs up and i apologize youtube has screwed up my notifications somehow they're not showing me when I get comments sometimes. And I just found a whole bunch of comments from like a week, two weeks, three weeks ago. Uh, so if you just got my responses, that's why it was not showing. And somebody commented on a video and YouTube showed me that one comment. And I click on it and I've got a whole list of comments. So don't know what's up with YouTube, but we all know YouTube unsubscribes people. Uh, and doesn't always give notifications and everything else. So if you don't uh, hear back from me, if you have questions or uh, don't get any type of response from me, feel free to go over to Facebook or Instagram or my email and uh, contact me through there and let me know what's going on. And because I am, this is slowly but surely growing bigger and bigger and bigger and I'm getting more and more responses. Uh, that's like my Facebook and everything like that. I used to wake up in the morning with maybe four or six um, things on Facebook. Now I'm waking up, I've got 30, 40, 50, 60 uh, notifications on Facebook and Instagram and private emails and everything else. So uh, my goal has always been is try to give back to every single person that I can get to. And that's what my evenings are for. And I will continue to try to get back with everybody. So if I don't, let me know. And we'll go from there. Have a great week. Enjoy. Summer is around the corner. All right, you can see it is snowing like crazy. I was just about ready to start ripping all this out. This is the original chicken coop area. And it's about to get revamped as soon as the weather gets better. All right, the weather got better and I was able to start working on the chicken coop area. So you can see these are all roost. They're all tall enough where I can walk underneath. I don't have to worry about smacking my head. And I made all these boxes. I believe there is 15, uh, three rows of five, and then another uh, three rows of five on the left-hand side of me. And... I did this with the slanted roof so that way they poop on it. I can take a stick, knock it down in the center, and then just clean the center out. You can see we have a couple ducks over here uh, laying eggs. I have eggs here, eggs there, eggs all the way down. And this way with the, so uh, the wood chips, they can't knock the wood chips out as much. Some of the boxes are dirty with poop already because... I just got the overhead boards installed, so they were roosting inside the boxes until I got that done. Also cut the hole in the side, and everything's looking good. How so exciting, Johnny. Got my first baby chick. Just breaking out. All right, so I'm in my tractor, and once again, this tractor is amazing because without this tractor, I would not be able to get half of the stuff I get done uh, that I do around here on the ranch. So, as Splenda has had three piles loaded here in the parking lot, so I'm over here moving all the mulch and getting the driveway done, and I'll take you for a little ride so you can see what I'm doing. <laughs>
All right, so all that green fabric that I had down that was all torn up from the dogs running around. I tore all that out. Uh, the six foot fence that was laying across with the six foot T post, I tore all that out. I went ahead, I laid the six foot fence as you can see there uh, against the barbed wire fence. I'm going to bring it out to the corner of the property line, cut the fence, uh, and then go ahead and get T posts up so that way the fence is. A little more of a blockage for coyotes and stuff to come in this area and then I'll tear out all that ground going back to the uh, cattle panels and put six foot fence across there I got the three piles of mulch done I went ahead I spread all the way down to the other side of the driveway over to Wall Mountain Road uh, I think I'm four maybe five buckets shy of completing the driveway but I at least got down to my sign and I should have another load of mulch coming sometime this week from Esplenda so when they get that I'll go ahead and finish off the driveway that should be done by Friday and then I can take rest of mulch and start uh, filling in the animal area and giving them a little nicer area after I rake the rocks out of the way uh, it'd be a lot softer not as rocky and a smaller area they can lay down I also, that uh, U-shape, I pulled all the green fabric out of that, so that's down to dirt now, and you can see I've got a little bit right there at the top that you can see it's still a little bit I need to clean up. I'll get to that this week, and that's pretty much it. So, a lot of stuff going down, and a lot of stuff getting accomplished, and a lot, lot more to do. All right, so this is the temporary Rubbermaid shed that I got from Home Depot that I was talking about. Here I'll dig a trench line once my house is built, and this will be the pad uh, the size of the well house. But like I said, I want to get the house built first and then uh, get the inspectors in here get everything uh, finalized as permanent. This is just going to be temporary so I can have access to water. So when I'm building the house, it's easier to uh, wash things off with concrete and so on and so forth. I also need uh, water for the petting zoo. So I got the pressure tank, the well pump, the wire for it, the rope for it, all the different materials uh, to plumb everything. So like I said, this is temporary. I'll cut a hole here at the top, uh, put a spigot to the outside. So that way I can run a hose off of it. There's a hose right there. And then I can also figure out some type of shower head. So that way I'm not taking baby wipe showers anymore. Or baby wipe baths I should say. Uh, like we did in the military. I can stop buying baby wipes and start uh, being able to just shower here. And then you can see there's Pickles. The little uh, baby girl donkey there on the left. Uh, hanging out with Stubbs. Uh, the mom's down below. And here's all the guineas. So this gives you an idea. The guineas just roam all over the place. And it's just a mob of them. Uh, and they just scatter all throughout the ranch. So nothing like seeing the animals out in their element. And of course I got to get all that stuff picked up and moved to the other side of the ranch. So it's all ready for opening day. <laughs> 